In the last three videos, I shared how Revelation 17.3 exposed the Vatican being a church and state combined that sits on seven hills with scarlet-colored robes, exactly as prophecy said the headquarters of Antichrist will be. In that same prophetic verse, however, is still another prophetic element we need to take a look at that can also be seen fulfilled only by the Vatican. Revelation 17.3 says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. There are actually two ways to define blasphemy in Scripture. The first definition is when a man claims to be a god on earth. After Jesus said he and his Father in heaven are one, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. What happened next is shared in John chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. The second way to define blasphemy is when a man claims to have the power to forgive the sins of men. And again, I will let the scripture make this definition clear so as to remove all doubt by sharing what's recorded in Mark chapter 2. When the brothers of the man sick of palsy lowered him down through the roof in front of Jesus, this is what happened. It's in Mark chapter 2 verses 5 to 7. It says, When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee, but... There were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who could forgive sins but God only? Of course, in both instances, the leaders of the day were dead wrong to attribute the sin of blasphemy upon Christ. In both cases, however, it allows us a biblical record of how blasphemy is defined. Blasphemy definition number one is when a man claims to be a god, and blasphemy number two is when a man claims to forgive the sins of men. That all being said, do the popes of Rome claim to be a god on earth, and do the popes, prelates, priests, and nuns teach that the priests can forgive the sins of men? I'm only going to share a few quotes to keep the video short. Please visit this page on my site, wherein I post dozens of well-documented quotes so as to further your own research as well as remove all doubt. And so when it comes to the popes claiming to be a god on earth, the Vatican has declared in writing numerous times the following blasphemy. When addressing the pope, it is stated in the history of the councils, and notice the titles that they use for the pope here. They say unto the pope, for thou art the shepherd, thou art physician, thou art the director, thou art the husbandman. Finally, thou art another God on earth. They also stated in the Catholic National in July of 1895 that the Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, he is Jesus Christ himself, hidden under the veil of the flesh. And then John Paul II literally stated in his book, Threshold of Hope, on page 3 in 1994, he said, the leader of the Catholic Church is defined by the faith as the vicar of Jesus Christ and is accepted as such by believers. The Pope is considered the man on earth who takes the place of the second person of the omnipotent God of the Trinity. And the second person is, of course, Jesus Christ. By the way, I expose the unbiblical Trinity dogma here on my website for those needing many, many Bible verses proving the Vatican and the Seventh-day Adventist Trinity, as well as all the other Protestant churches that claim Trinity. The Bible verses confirm it's a lie. And finally, when it comes to a man forgiving men's sins, it is actually declared by the Vatican that this judicial authority will even include the power to forgive sin. They literally put that in their Catholic encyclopedia, no less. And then they stated, God himself is obliged to abide by the judgment of his priest and either not to pardon or to pardon, according as they refuse to give absolution, provided the penitent is capable of it. Prophecy fulfilled. Thank you for watching. God bless.